Okay, students. So what we're going to do is we're going to create, like I said, a spot elevation. This is a spot elevation that's given by to us by the engineer. But once again, it's just text and a legal uh, leader with a dot. So we're going to create a style specifically through Civil 3D that will read the information, like I said, off the surface and populate and edit the text and put the text in there for us. We're going to use the same type of uh, spot elevation like we did for these. We did this earlier in the, in the videos to help us. And these were reading the existing ground elevation. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those because I don't need them. But for example, like it's here in this corner, I'm going to go back to my uh, feature lines just to kind of show you the elevation on this corner. So this corner right in here at that spot, we have an elevation of, of 40, uh, uh, 3804.4975. Okay. Don't forget that you're going to see that down here at the bottom uh, when I hover over it, or we can just do the ID command either way. And that's the elevation we're going to be focusing on, 3804.49. If we round it, it will be 3804.50. 3804.50. Okay. So I can even put a spot elevation. I can go in there to surfaces, add surface labels. I'm going to add a spot elevation. And it's asking me... Um, to select the surface, I can go and select the surface. I can select one of these contours, or I can hit enter and select it from the list for my proposed ground surface. We're now working with proposed ground. Hit OK. And then I can go and place my spot elevation at this point. OK. So there it is, pretty much what you saw right now. Now, the thing, though, yeah, this is correct, but I need the, the elevation to look like this in this format. So to do that, what's going to happen is we're going to have to customize or make our own style. We can try to edit one if we find something close, or we can make a new one. Um, either way, I'm going to try in this case to make our new one, but but it's 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 using this type of um, um, label. We're going to uh, use that uh, type of label, but again, make it look like this. Okay. So we're going to go back to um, so I can go and start working with the uh, labels. I'm going to go back to annotate. Add labels notes. Under notes, I'm going to change uh, over to the feature, which will be surface. And then the label type will be a, uh, a spot elevation. Okay. So as far as the spot elevation, uh, unfortunately, there's only one style, which is actually this style right in here. And then as far as the marker, that's really only that one marker that's that little purple dot. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with. Um, um, uh, creating a style because this one, you know, you can just by looking at it, it looks nothing like the one that I need. So I do need to change it up. So I'm going to go ahead and just create a new one and create a new style. And I guess I'll just call it, um, I guess, spot elevation or I'm trying to think what should be the best uh, prop for proposed spot elevation. We'll call it because it is for the proposed ground. We're going to go to general, and I didn't show you up, uh, on this video up to now, but I will tell you the, the layer of this one. It's in green. You'll have to believe me for now. You can look at it a, a little layer if you want to. It will be under the proposed spot shot. That's the layer that uh, that was given to me. Once I inserted it, I created it, so it's, that's why it's in the list of layers that uh, I'm, I'm able to use. So I'm going to go ahead and use that proposed spot shot. I'm going to go to layout. Okay. So as far as surface elevation, okay, so the surface elevation contents um, and then text height, uh, just, you know, all these things, but we're going to look at contents first. So I want to show this contents. I'm going to go here to contents and I'm going to select a little code and really uh, it's going to be a surface elevation. So that, that works for me for now. Let me just kind of show you what's going to be happening in the thought process behind this. Um, I'm going to delete the, the, the select the, the, the code. Make sure it says surface elevation. I'm going to change it to a precision of two decimal places. Insert that code. Hit OK. And then apply. And hit OK. So now I have a style that I'm going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this one right here. Delete this one. Go back to my notes. Surface. Spot elevation, and then add. Asking which uh, surface, I can select either this contour, which is part of the proposed ground, or hit enter from the list and select it from the list, either one, and then pick a point. Right there. Okay. So, well, we got a little bit further. At least it kind of matches the uh, layer so far. Like I did mention, this layer is under the proposed spot shot. So this one, I think, should be already on that same layer. 
So obviously we got a ways to go. So we're going to go back to edit the style. We're going to go back to general text style. Hmm. Do we have a different text styles? Oh, there we go. So we actually have a, a text style that came in with the spot shots. Very good. So we're going to go change the text style. Hit apply. So you can kind of see that it's already starting to change right in here. And then I'm going to go to layout. I'm not going to mess with text height yet. I'm going to be doing quite a few things because I'm going to go into what's called a drag state. When I go to a drag state, I have a different text height, even though right now it says the same one. But on the drag state, I need to use this one because that, whenever you, you drag a layer, uh, a label out, it adds an arrow or whatever you want to uh, configure. And that's exactly what I have that I need to configure here. I, I, need, I can't leave it like this because what's going to happen is I need to eventually drag the, the label out. So that label is like this. But again, I need it to look like this. So whenever you drag it out like this, that's called a drag state. So whatever settings we work with on the style, we're going to go back to edit the current selection. I need to work with a combination of the two. So the drag state will be the um, this arrowhead. So right now the arrowhead says close fill, which is a little arrowhead. I want it to look like this. So that's going to be a dot and apply. So there's my dot. It's way too big. The dot size, if you may remember from this one, from the last video was 0 0.06 and apply there. Okay. Now the other thing too, before I continue too far is notice my scale factor. My scale factor right now, it's at a 1 to 40. And that's okay. But the thing is, I really need it to be matching my paper space. So as far as my paper space, I need it to be 1 to 20. So then I'm going to go ahead and get out of this command. And change this over to a 20. That way my dots and my text heights are more proportionate because I'm working with a 1 to 20 viewport. So back in here, I went ahead and model space and changed that to 1 to 20 so everything matches the same. So you can kind of see that we're at least now starting to match the arrowhead. It's going to go back to edit. Okay. Uh, visibility. So I guess I'm good with the arrowhead. So now let's start working with the contents of the text. So, geez, there's just so many things that we have to kind of consider. Um, I guess before that, maybe the border. We'll have to go with the border. True. Apply that one. There it is. Again, we're just trying to match it. Text height should be 0 0.08 is usually the size of the text that we use. Okay. So notice this one is a little narrower than this one. And with it being narrower, like it is right in here, I need to make some type of adjustment. It just, it just looks narrower. And uh, just by looking through here, you really can't adjust what's called the width factor, at least not that I know of or I haven't seen that in here as far as the text is, is concerned. So that might be an AutoCAD setting we might have to consider. So before I continue, I'm going to go ahead and go to my AutoCAD styles, ST for styles. And as far as I propose spot shot, that has a width factor of one. You're going to have to do this. Let me just see if I can find the width factor of this guy. That text right in there has a width uh, 0.7. Very good. So for this to look like this, what I'm going to have to do is go to the textile itself. since that's what's embedded within the, uh, um, the label and go to propose spot shot and change that width factor to 0.7. That'll be within the text itself. There we go. So it looks a little bit narrower. So we're getting closer. Let's go back over here to edit the current elevation. Uh, let's see. So I guess I can add the GT part. So I'm going to go back to layout under contents. We have the surface elevation. There it is. And that's what gives us this information. So in front of that surface elevation, I can just type in the layers GT space. Hit OK. Apply. And okay. All right. So we're getting a little closer. Now, this is another issue we need to talk about. Notice our spot elevations. Notice that we all have two decimal places, the decimal, and then two decimal places. We have four decimal places, a decimal, two decimal places. 
we need to somehow get rid of this part so that Civil 3D will only read and display this information here, right in here. That, I will tell you, is going to get fairly complicated. That's going to be a, a series of things that we need to do. Uh, we have to create what's called expressions. And on those expressions, we have to do some trunk some truncating, tr a, a truncate. So I actually have a set of notes for myself on how I did that many, many years. But I'm going to go and share that information with you. Um, you can try to follow along with my notes, but these are the notes that I have on how to do that. But even I had a hard time <laughs> following my notes. So I had to kind of review this before I created this video a little bit. But there's quite a few steps that you have to do, but you're welcome to pause this video and take some screenshots if you wanted to take a, a copy of these notes because it's having to do uh, almost like some programming that we're going to have to do, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have to truncate uh, this text, but to do that, um, and, and, and just to kind of show you what's going to happen, is we actually have to come up with an expression and the expression will be part of the property. So we're going to have to really define our own property right in here to truncate and do some, some really, in my opinion, it's kind of some crazy things. So before any of this stuff, we actually need to go to our settings. We have to go to surface, label style, spot elevation. Okay. So we are going to have to create our own expression. Now I'm going to create our, our own expression. So I'm going to go over here to expression. I'm going to right click and create new. And the name of the expression, I'm going to call it, I'm just going to call it GT surface 00.00, okay? Now, in here, I'm going to put, um, I guess, you don't have to put this, but I'm just going to, so I can truncate it, elevation for xx.xx, for GT, I guess I'll put that, for gutter. Dot, uh, and then we're going to have to put in that expression. That expression, I have it on my notes. I'm going to go ahead and put it to the, on the description of this uh, of this one particular video. That way you just copy and paste because if you're not careful and you go put the parentheses or the dots or whatever in the right place, uh, it won't work. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in the description of this video. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it here. It's going to be the expression. And then down here, we need to format it as an elevation. Okay. By truncating it, we're going to do some rounding. It's going to read the surface elevation off the, the surface and display it so that it shows up correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And there's our new expression. Once I select it, it shows it down here on the type of expressions that we have up to now. So there it is. Now, the thing, though, is we're going to go back to the, um, the style. So I can actually select it here. And we're, it's really just going back to edit the label style itself the proposed spot elevation. So we're going to go and edit the current selection. And the way that's going to work, is going to be under this part right in here. So we're going to select in here and it's going to be a new code that shows going to show up now. So what's going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, um, this uh, code right in here, delete it. And I'm going to go and insert the GT surface elevation. Now this is where it's going to get even more weird. <clears throat> because I'm going to have to enter it in three separate components. So I'm going to enter the GT surface elevation. I'm going to change the precision to two decimal places. I'm going to change the rounding to truncate. How did I find this out? I actually Googled all this stuff. And then output is going to be right of decimal. Right of decimal and insert that. This, ladies and gentlemen, is only going to be for the two decimal places before uh, the, the, the two whole numbers before the decimal place. So all of this will be just for these two numbers. And then I'm going to click here and add a dot. And then I need to add this part over here. And after the decimal point is where we're going to add another little code for these part of the decimals. Okay. Now that one will be different. We're not going to use the GT surface on that side. And we have the code for the GT surface. Once again, for this part of the elevation, for the spot elevation, we added the little dot, the little decimal. And then now we're going to add another code for this one. For this one, though, we're not going to use the GT property. We're going to use a different one. So let me show you what that one looks like. So for that one, what we're going to do is we're going to use a surface elevation. So for that code right in here, we're going to go to a surface elevation. For that one is also going to be a precision of two, round normal, 
And then the only thing that happens is the output will be the output to the right of the decimal. Okay, and then that'll be the code we're going to insert there. So we're going to have the GT surface with these settings, which uh, the, the, that precision, the rounding of truncated and then write a decimal. We're going to have the, the little dots that we're going to type in as a decimal for the, the between the, uh, the elevation and the elevation. And then for this code right in here will be just a basic surface elevation, precision zero one round uh, normal, and then output right of decimal. That'll be that code there. And we hit OK. Apply, hit OK, and OK. And that will give you that spot shot there. And this is just for the gutter. There's going to be another video that we're going to uh, produce for you right now to put in the top of curb. But what's neat, what's neat about it is no matter where I move it, you can kind of see that the elevation changes. And it, it is attached to the proposed ground surface, so I can just go and place it and put it in a different location. I go read that information and edit your text exactly for that one spot, whatever that, wherever that spot may be. So it's just a matter of moving the spotter elevation around, adjusting it, placing it. But again, we're still not done quite yet. See how this one changed because it's reading that elevation there. So it's really having to do with this point right in here. That's called the anchor point. So once I place it in different locations, I go move it. Um, I go move it to the different locations. And then the next step will be to, to and then you can move the spot elevation. See, this can stay pretty much anywhere. You want to place it closer, but then what, what's reading the elevation is this point right in here. Okay. The next video will be to show you how to do the expressions because there's a, a different set of expressions specifically for the topper curve, and that'll be on the next video.